people that they told me that singing was a hobby and it's a waste of time. To be had in the whole of Sydney. Really? It took my fancy, so I told her I'd go and see you when my eye was better. Oh, yeah. Mm. She was pretty good. Mm. Mm. Luckily, my case manager has also had eye problems and has taken the same medication as I am on, so it has there's a certain to... amount of sympathy there for yeah, my predicament. That's good. Well, let's go and work on this guitar. Okay. been under wraps for about three, for about six months. We've had it covered up, so I haven't looked at it in that amount of time. Prior to that, it was set up in a CD store up the road. Yeah. So maybe you could get a bit of a look on the, the detail. I'm just unwrapping it now. So it's like a long lost friend that I haven't seen for a long time. But Looking good. Mm -hmm. Really, when I, I watched This Is Elvis, that was really when Elvis actually, can you say took over your life? Mm. No, yeah, well, well, sort of, yes, was when I had watched This Is Elvis and I, I my son had um, borrowed it for me and, and I, I remember watching it and and I couldn't give it back. Oh, I just couldn't because I thought it belonged to me, you know. I, I, I don't know, I, I just I don't know. something about that particular film, yes, film just yes. So why did you decide to build this thing? Nothing better to do. It was raining. I was bored. Nothing on TV. Yeah. And I was watching an Elvis movie, and I thought I'd make a guitar. And that's all. That's it. No, that's lies. It's very black over there before. It's beautiful bright over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the middle of nowhere, Australia style Halloween. You can tell by the lack of architecture. <laughs> the flag looks good though. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at all those floral tributes. The sun is actually hitting it at the right time. That's great. Glory, glory, hallelujah. So what, what is your impression of the Elvis Memorial here in oh, Melbourne General Cemetery? I think Cemetery? it's fantastic. I think Sydney should build one immediately. To Elvis. <laughs> not just for your birthday, not just for a year, but a wish forever. For all you hold most dear. For true warmth and for gladness. For dreams that all come true. A very special... Special wish is made, especially for you. I love you, only you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Sign nobody. For gladness and for Gladys. That's right. Well, with that, I think we'll just cut to somewhere else. Hey, I'm wondering, have you still got that space downstairs? Is that still empty or you booked it out? Or Because um, I've had an expression of interest from the Third International Conference on Elvis Presley about getting my guitar to Memphis and um, the guy rang me last night and he's going to see if he can give me some kind of financial support to get it over there but he wants me to work out 
how much it's going to cost and all that kind of thing. And I'm thinking, well, I've got to get it out of the warehouse and get it crated, so I need a space for a couple of days where I could put it in a crate. So I was just wondering if your space would be available. And yeah. Because of it, we watch Elvis, how he treat people oh, yeah. and talk to people, and that's how we came. You know, like, I don't know, just, we grew, you know, that's how we came, like, we became more better human beings, like, you know, we're nice to people, we help people, and, you know, and I think that's that, part, that was part yeah. of it, actually. Without you knowing, you find yourself, you're doing things that Elvis does, and suddenly your friends say, wait a minute, you, you say this because yeah. Elvis said Because I always say, thank you, sir, thank you, ma'am, you, you yes, remember? Yes, yes, yeah. And they say, don't call me, sir, don't say, I'm not saying that, it's just happening. You know, it's just, it's the good things that you picked up, you know? Not to be, copy him, no one tried to be good, this comes natural. It's good, it's something good, and you keep it. it uh, so, I know it sounds weird, but that's what I, you know? I mean, people tell me, oh, you don't smoke because Elvis doesn't, doesn't smoke. smoke. I say, wait a minute, Elvis does smoke, but well, he doesn't inhale it. Don't be cool to to I've been doing courses with the CES, Social Security. How's it going? It's not really what I want to do, but I don't have a choice. There would be things. So if you're on the um, Social Security system, do they consider being an Elvis impressionist? They told me, you know, this, this what they, they told me that singing was a hobby and it's a waste of time. To them it's just a hobby and I shouldn't be looking at singing as a job. Now, they want me out there to do a proper job, a nine to five or whatever. But I've seen dancers and all kinds of things advertised for the CES. I think singing is a legitimate job. Did you fight with them about it or did you just take what they said? And... I, I, I did argue a point with them. I, I said, look, I've, I've, I've won like, three competitions since like, August last year. And I said, I'm not doing too bad. I put a lot of effort into it, a lot of money. And I believe that I have a future in this business. And I'm, I don't care what they say, I'm going to stick to it. So what's your ambition? What's your main goal? My ambition is to become the best Elvis in this country that they've ever seen. And I believe that I can do the job. So do we. And I've got my fan club. Yeah, we believe you can. So what's the fan club going to do to help Tony in his goal to be number Try one? Try and get him some work. Yeah, that's what they've been doing lately. That's what they've been doing. They've been doing that. No one here has said anything yet. <laughs> Speak up. You're not the dummy, you know. You do have a mind. <laughs> Tell me, how do you think Tony compares to, say, Eddie Youngblood or one yeah. of the other... David Casserly. David Casserly. <laughs> He used to be no. a big David Casserly fan. Kind of dropped out. I did. Was a big David Casserly fan. And what happened? He got too smart. I did, I did try to tell you. Yeah. As in clever or? No, as in personality-wise. And Tony's not like that. And I think Tony can go a long way if we can get some work for him. Uh, I'll pick up you another job. I'll be a football club. You had any uh, singing training? Explain to everybody why you want to find a place called Mega World. Well, I got this phone call today, well, it was on our machine, to ring someone at uh, Republican Air Freight who had been in touch with someone from Mega World USA, some woman called Pamela Anderson, that I'm hoping is the Pamela Anderson. But anyway, I spoke to this guy and he said, oh, yes, 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 uh, I believe you've got a couple of statues to send to Memphis, to Mega World, USA. And I went, well, they're not statues and I ain't never heard of Mega World, so now I'm trying to find Mega World on the internet because it's not in the Memphis tourist guide. So I have no idea what Mega World is or what it does. This guy in uh, America, you know, I told you about that Elvis conference. Yes, yes. Well, he wants me to try and get my um, guitar over there. Yeah. And he's trying to organise a freight company to sponsor me, I think. So I'm trying to find out from him what's going on, but it, there's nothing definite. But it sounds like it's promising anyway. Well, it sounds good. 
Yeah, well, it's still there. Yes. So, <laughs> I think I've already got the tickets. I don't want to miss out. Welcome, Linda. This is uh, Vernon Chadwick, from Mississippi. Uh, it appears that I've worked out uh, some arrangements to bring the Tupelo One guitar sculpture to the Elvis Conference, and I am going to try to fax you a letter from Mega World Travel in Memphis, who has a shipping... Um, agency in Australia who will um, help make the arrangements to bring the sculpture to Memphis for the Elvis conference. It's exciting because it means that Vernon's organized for the guitar to get to Memphis. Um, the only thing I've got to worry about is getting it crated so it doesn't have to go on its own as it is. It needs some protection and then I have to worry about it getting there myself because I didn't get any money but it's exciting because it was going to cost uh, you know, eight grand or something for this piece to get to Memphis and now it's costing nothing but it's going to mean that it's actually going to Memphis it's fantastic it's really it's really exciting I'm just a bit so what's your relationship to Elvis, James. How do you feel about Elvis? Um, I think I'm rapidly turning into him. Because <laughs> I used to be the size of a jockey. And just over the years I've grown exactly Elvis size. I'm now the exact size that Elvis was about two minutes before he died. It's <laughs> freezing cold, the middle of winter. 7th of July and we're up going to this shop <laughs> to get the paper because I might be in it. <laughs> mm. right. Dressed to kill. Let me see what you're wearing. <laughs> the man will think we're there to hold him up. <laughs> now there's an idea. Yeah. All right. And what does it say? Read it to us. Uh, too much, it's entitled. Yeah. The sarcophagus above is Australia's unofficial contribution to the looming 20th anniversary of Elvis's death. Local artist Rosalinda McGovern created the shrine to the king for the 96 It's a Guitar Shaped World exhibition at Tamworth. Dr Vernon Chadwick, director of the International Conference on Elvis, an annual event at the University of Mississippi, wanted it bad when he saw it, but how to get it to the event? The guitar shaped shrine is four meters by two meters and weighs 125 kilos, big enough to house the king at his most prosperous, or a couple of Roseanne's, McGovern observes. An American travel company, fronted naturally by a woman called Pamela Anderson, came to the rescue and paid the many thousands of dollars in freight fees. So you've got uh, a month to get to Memphis, you're gonna get there? Well, look, I've got to get rid of this cold first. I'm a bit sick, so yeah. I'm trying to get better, but um, it's looking promising. Well, I think it's looking promising. <laughs> um, we just have to get a couple of airfares. I think we're going to have to can the idea of a major documentary, so if you're viewing this <laughs> sometime in the future, Someone's count yourself through. bloody lucky because we never thought we'd do it because we've only got one little camera and no money. I'm going to say that this is where my father, Lawrence, is buried, and he died the night I decided to make the Elvis guitar. So, he's buried in fairly humble circumstances, as compared with Elvis, and his grave was pretty, sorry, his coffin was pretty plain, as opposed to Elvis's guitar that I've made. But, um, in my mind, Elvis and Laurie are having fun together somewhere in space.